Hello, everyone. So I was recently doing the session and I was addressing the issue where a lot of people are actually trying to manifest things or may simply make their life work. But a lot of people like, you know, it's like they're trying to achieve one thing and everyone else but them gets what they want. So with that, I was like doing the session looking into why it's happening and I'll tell you the detail of what I saw in the session and like how to deal with all and all the stuff. But there it is. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to be the uh, kind of uh, uh, just get in there and ask questions when, when I get curious about <laughs> what the hell. Yeah. I yeah. thought like bringing Rich to this video will help a lot because like I have a way like of seeing things and I tell people what I see. Well, this guy translates what I'm seeing and puts it into human language so that everyone mm -hmm. could get what's going on for real. Uh, so, yeah. Basically, the idea is that lately, a lot of people are noticing that they're trying to achieve something in life. Like they have a goal, they have a dream, they want to make it happen. But no matter what they do, it's just not working. So like one thing is like you have a goal or dream and it's not like manifesting. And another thing, you have a thing you want, you have your goal, but everyone else will get it but you. So it's kind of like you want to make it happen and then you're not the one getting it and everyone else is like happy. So that's kind of like a, a thing I was looking at. And basically, it led me to a very interesting thing. It's involving Anunnaki, AI, other races, our entities, thoughts, and all the other things, religions. So it's pretty deep, which is why I needed this guy to translate what I'm talking about. So, so you were doing like a psychic deep scan for a client or something? Well, the usual <clears throat> role session. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so you were looking into his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then you found that, he, well, his complaint or his issue had something to do about not getting what he wanted and stuff like that? Is that how it all started? Um, actually, his issues are quite different. It's just that there was like one thing that stood out. I'm like, oh, this thing, like kind of like, um, kind of like getting leftovers, like always wanting a bit too much and not getting it. And I'm like, okay, that's like, I get it. And like the more I started focusing on it, it's kind of like, I had a lot of people I've been working with and they had one thing in common, like what, like over 400, 500 clients. And like a lot of them say that they want to try manifesting something and it's either not working or when they try to manifest something or make something happen, everyone else gets it, but them. So like I, I took the common signs and went deeper, kind of like not specifically for just one person, but looking like why is so many affected by it. So by that, um, Basically, <laughs> I started going into like, let's say the first things that started appearing is kind of like religious groups and not just like, let's say Christianity, but like pretty much everyone, everyone that prays, everyone that wants a better life. What happens is that let's say humanity is monitored 24 seven. Like we have the mind, which is more of an implant rather than a natural thing. And by <clears> that, it's like being monitored 24 seven where every single thought is tracked, every single emotion, everything you focus on is on boards of someone else. And with that, Let's say you get the trigger, like you want you want something to happen, you're gonna go out or like go for a date or something, and things just start going sideways. Like Murphy's Law is following you, or you know, like things are just not happening, like tons of obstacles or failures and other things, interruptions. And with all that, it leads us to a place where you fail, something happens, and then a lot of people are playing like, oh God, please help me to achieve that thing. But that is actually being used against us where we're praying for something and they say like, oh, that's what they want. And they will use that to target us, basically to trigger us. <clears throat> Everyone gets it but you and you're the one, but please God, I asked for this. And they're like, ah, they're gonna smash you and torture you and basically not give you what you want to sort of like drain that loser energy from you. And I don't know if you wanted to say something yeah, about so it. It's, yeah, so it's kind of like a, a setup from the gods or the, the god of a religion uh, to get you to ask them for help or assistance. It's pretty much, yeah, like let's say <clears throat> religions, deities, spirit guides, archangels, angels, and whatever people are like looking at and asking for help, even like let's say higher self, over self, all those, oh, you know, like something big is going to help you out. It's kind of like a lot of them are being manipulated and they're being used and deceived. And all of that is kind of like just touching the surface because they're not in control. They're simply the puppets that are being like, let's say they're being used to mess with us kind of like that. And so if you're asking for something, you're not going to get it and everyone else will. And you're, you're going to keep on asking and see yourself fail and meet tons of obstacles and sort of like, ah, like life is not working, it's hopeless, it's not going to happen. And then you have tons of thoughts and beliefs of how bad it is, but all this energy is being taken. And so the more I started focusing on like, where is it going? I found that 
and Lil is basically responsible. Like, and Lil and Marduk. Marduk is like the one sort of like, from what I've seen in this specific session, had connections to connecting to the mind. It's kind of like, I don't know, like having a court or something and similar sort of like um, focusing on us 24 seven. Every single thought you have, every idea, every thing you have within. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in Lil, there, the Enlil, uh, we're talking about the Anunnaki, the, you know, 450 years ago, 450,000 years ago or so, they, they came to Earth and uh, they were mining the gold. This is the, the main story we hear about them. Um, and uh, they've actually interacted, they're giant humans, but they also interact with uh, reptilians, interbreed with the reptilian race. And <clears throat> anyway, uh, Anu was the father and he's the king of the Anunnaki, Gang and then uh, Anu Anunnaki. Uh, they had two sons, Enlil and Inki. Inki is the guy that goes on the ground and he's doing all the groundwork and he's responsible for the gold mining and all that stuff and creating the slave race, humanity, genetic engineering and modification and stuff like that to get a, the right kind of human or biological life form from a hominid kind of thing. Bah, like that. So that's his job down there. So he takes hundreds and hundreds of years or whatever it takes, thousands to develop the basic human DNA the way he needed and wanted it. So he would, you would get a, a, a slave race that you could control that would take orders, but was strong enough and smart enough to do some technical stuff. So he would mine the gold. Enlil, his brother was the space force. He's in charge of that. And they would ship the gold from mining the gold up into the, the, the crafts. And then Enlil would be in charge of all that space command shit and uh, send the gold off to wherever. And Marduk is Inky's son. Okay, hybrid son, part human and part reptilian. So he's got that devil looking thing to him. That's the story I understood. Yeah. So, okay, so just in case we're new people that didn't know what Inky and Inlil and uh, Marduk is all about. Marduk's the grandson, kind of like a, a devil, satanic look, and you can decide whether it's the same guy or not. It doesn't matter. Let's, let's go ahead. Yeah, so that's really good you, you explain. And basically, Marduk sort of implants, like, let's say, a mind. So everyone that thinks, it's not, it's not natural for people to think. Because, like, let's say when you drop dead, or let's say when you're you're in the astral, it's very clear. Like you don't get your thoughts, you don't get your case. Everything that happened here on Earth is just like it's not there. You're focused on on the present, and you're more into the state of awareness and knowledge. You look at something, you know things. It's not like ah, it's that thing. So like it just doesn't happen like that. And when Marduk implants the mind, like and let's say it's from from this session, they get the access to every single thought we have, everything that's going on within us. So complete monitoring. And then now they're sort of harvesting the energy. Like we know the luge, but at the same time, it's even like smallest things like being a little bit dissatisfied, a little bit like, ah, it just didn't happen or like focus on like wrong things and all this stuff. And literally they will look for every single trigger they can get. They will look at like, what is it that you focus on that will make you feel bad? And let's say you have a goal and they're gonna crush you with it. They're gonna like find tons of triggers to sort of like suck out your energy. And that energy is being stored in the containers and basically, Enlil is the one that's collecting everything and selling it off to other races. And what happened is kind of like collecting all this energy and being sold off and our energy, like each of us is like a nuclear power plant or a sun that can power up massive civilizations, planets, spaceships, and all the other stuff. So when they have, let's say this little container of our energy and just from one person, you know, like they trigger you, you get like all like all crazy and it takes a while. And, you know, like they sell it off to other races and now they're powering up their whole system. So they need, they don't, they don't like need anymore to mine, to get other resources, to work for it. It's like, oh, it's already taken care of. It's going to be the powered up for a few years from one person. <laughs> and now other beings are like, where did you get that? Like, why are you not working? How can I get the same thing? So they have other races being interested in coming and getting the same sort of energy, if that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, just think of the movie, uh, The Matrix, and everybody's in a pod and the, the, the energy of the, of the person is being used to power all this machinery and the entire world and this entire race of AI. Well, it's kind of like that, but real. And the ETs, <clears throat> the Anunnaki, Enlil, Inki, Marduk, these, 
they they have this technology, they know this technology, and they use this technology. Uh, and not only are they using it for themselves, they're, they're selling off our energy, uh, also known as louche, to whoever. They're also selling off humans and <laughs> children that. and for all kinds of reasons, for our brain power, for our intelligence, for our cre creativity, our ability to mm, build bigger, better spacecraft, uh, and also as uh, gardeners and manual labor, and also for sex market, and, and also for body parts, uh, adrenochrome. You name it. <laughs> we are the cattle of the universe, <laughs> it looks like. Not, not all humans, but the humans of Earth. Uh, we're, we, you know, we're caught in that situation. Pretty much. So <clears throat> let's say more beings see that there are races that have their whole like planets and spaceships and technologies powered up and they're looking for the source. So they find Enlil and Enlil is kind of like a dealer. He's like in between man where he's like, oh, Marduk will take care of that. Cause I'm like, let's say he's gonna like get all the energy. And it's kind of like natural, let's say, tons of cores attached to people kind of like being connected like in the matrix in that machine and they're sucking you out like every time you focus on something they will find what to trigger you with they're like okay they're focusing on one goal like oh it's such a nice day let's go out for a date let's go for a drive and all the stuff starts like a, a storm or something else happens and like ah, i can't go out right now like like plants falling apart and like all of your emotions are being taken and stored and sold off and like like now the more beings want the energy the more we're being attacked and a lot of people like, like they're trading. So let's say they get the energy to power up their systems, but then they're going to give off some technology. And one of the things is kind of like to power up and make this whole game even worse. It's kind of like the reversal system. As in you want something else, or like, let's say you have a goal and it's going to be redirected. So someone else gets what you want and you don't. So it's kind of like, like a lot of technology is playing a part where it's constantly like you're trying to create and manifest and you're doing your affirmations and you're doing all the spiritual work. And no matter how hard you work, people around you get the results and you're not. So it's like, kind of like even the worst. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of like, uh, uh, um, you're growing up and you're going to get a job and you go to college and your cousin goes to college and you never get along with this one particular cousin and you grow up and you both graduate from college. And, uh, You've always wanted a job in, let's say, the aerospace industry. You've always wanted that. And he didn't give a shit. He, you know, he was always good at something, but didn't really care and wasted his abilities. But he's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, he ends up getting the aerospace career that you've always wanted. Kind of like that. Yep. Ish. Pretty much. Yeah. And it, it disturbs the guy that wants it so bad. <clears throat> it's just like a, it'll drive you fucking nuts. Yeah, uh, and so you've been seeing that sort of a pattern yeah. with your clients. Yeah, and and same thing. Let's say you have someone you love, and you're working like maybe you're talking to a person, or maybe you're working on yourself. Like, hey, I'm gonna get this person, and you're doing affirmations, you're doing visualizations, and you're like all the stuff to get the person you love. And all of a sudden, you see that there are tons of people getting the person you love, getting to talk with them, getting to engage them, and you're the one being ignored and hated on, and then kind of shit about. So it's kind of like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen this when uh, going through high school and just college and stuff like this. Uh, like, uh, you got your eye on, on one person. You Oh, man, I really and then yeah, you try and you know, if I could just talk to her. Or, you know, I, oh, and you go talk to her and it's like, it's going good. It's going okay. You get a date or two. And oh, and uh, some Yahoo that just treats girls really bad. A narcissist, for example. Yeah, it just walks over and next thing you know, she's dating that guy and now they're boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. And he fucking dumps her. And you're sitting over there watching how terrible it all is. Mm -hmm. You know, you could take so much better care. And then uh, she goes back to him again. And it's just abusive fucking. And you go, what the fuck? You've seen yeah. that before? Yeah. Like, a lot. I mean, yeah. with clients and stuff. Tons. Tons of Jeez, people have these sorry. issues. And it's kind of like, you know, like you might not have let's say friends or anyone close but like you you find like hey this is the person i want and you start working on it and they're going to trigger like oh they're working on this person so they're going to work on the reversal mechanisms sanities tons of techniques how they can reverse people and for example everything you want will not happen 
and all the shit that you don't want will happen. It's kind of like they are working like the opposites. And even if you're trying to like, okay, I'm going to imagine the worst case scenario, it's going to happen. So they're using everything, you know, so like to just work against you. It's like, it's fucked up. Like the way they're like torturing humanity and like constantly draining us and then kind of like giving us those like false hopes or, you know, like you're focusing like, oh God, or like spirit guide or someone else, please help me with this. I just want this girl. I just want this thing. And they're like, cool they're taking notes and then they know how to target you so then they start crushing you so like the biggest thing i guess humanity can do is first of all like being control of yourself and when shit happens like trying not to respond in a way that would feed them you're more like oh that's one of one of those and you sort of like start not reacting like you 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 notice it you are aware of it you acknowledge it but you don't get with with emotions and they're kind of like they can't trigger you so it's like uh, useless like it doesn't work for a few times and they're they're gonna sort of switch their targeting to other people that are being drained some more if that makes sense yeah it makes sense but <clears throat> may i say something about <laughs> sure. this? don't respond emotionally um <clears throat> that's the challenge don't do it but that's easy to say right don't respond emotionally um it's so easy for some people <laughs> to like, and I just get fucking pissed. And I know this stuff intellectually. I know, oh, okay, well, whoa, whoa, don't be feeding <laughs> the gremlins, right? <laughs> and, like, and I go, well, why am I so compelled to express the anger and be angry and all that stuff, knowing what I know that I'm just feeding into it? And I go, you know what? Am I addicted to this angry stuff? This emotion, this adrenaline, this it feels a surge of power and angry. And if you and being right, if you can express the anger and feel, oh man, it's addictive. And because you step back from it, if you can shake that off and feel uh, uh, happy, you feel uh, like it's just a thing, you know. Okay, so I didn't get that thing, and those guys aggravated the, the hell out of me. So fine. Well, I can just focus on this other stuff that will make me feel good. I know what to do. I know how to focus on things that will trigger my dopamine stuff. And so I'm all good. And I don't want to. I don't want to feel good right now. I want to feel fucking pissed. <laughs> yeah. And but they they count on that, don't they? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's it's so easy. Like oh, people man. live their whole life. Let's say maybe you have abusive parent or someone in the family, and every time, like, let's say 7 p.m., parent parent comes back and they're gonna mess with you. So like you live with that for 10 years, you move out, you're like having a normal day, like being with friends, like drinking and all the stuff. 7 p.m., you're like feeling kind of weird and icky, and like you're like <laughs> you're in the fun place, everything's fun. You're like something's not right. So like you're like your body's addicted to that, and then some people continuously experience let's say for you it's anger for some like being the victim for some it's loneliness and always being ignored and there's tons of things like you're like i am the victim everyone always ignores me everyone leaves me no one helps me now like and there's tons of these mindsets and you express it and then you try to beat it but then you're addicted to it without being aware so you're always coming back like you're gonna find things to trigger that stuff and feel that thing again mm -hmm. it's kind of like a way for them to control us again so like just like okay we're gonna amplify some of these emotions and just like <laughs> fuck up humanity some more yeah and, uh, another along these lines when when they mm, they're triggering the opposites and getting you uh handing you the the exact opposite of what you want yeah that sort of stuff <clears throat> they uh we are addicted to thinking and when something bad happens, we start instantly thinking of a solution. If we're not angry, we're at least thinking, oh, how can I fix this? I got to do something. And it's like, think, 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 think. And they want us constantly always thinking. Yeah. And we, don't, we normally will be thinking uh, to either entertain ourselves so we're not bored or uh, to, to solve some kind of a problem or issue or puzzle. A, a puzzle if we're like bored, but... You know, it's like, hey, I gotta come up with some more money. Um, I, you know, what could I, what does she like? I want to impress her. Um, I need a girl. I need a girlfriend. Uh, where can I go to meet? You know, think, 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 think. Now, when we're in a good place and our survival isn't threatened on any level, uh, you know, the relationship thing is taken care of, the money thing is taken care of, the health thing is taken care of, social environment political issue it's all handled when you feel really good and at peace like that there's quiet mind and your attention is able to go out and enjoy the environment 
but that's normally so they they trigger so they want us thinking because the thinking will power up their stuff um you know loose stuff so any any kind of thinking would be a, a trickle theoretically it gives off an energy like you, you don't yeah. have to focus just on the negative but you're thinking and they're connected so they're going to drain you all the time mm -hmm. anyway yeah and i'm not saying don't ever think again but i'm saying we are addicted to thinking there's actually when people try to do a quiet mind thing they go and if they really pay attention they will notice they don't like how it feels it just feels too empty or too something's creepier there's some kind of energetic feeling to it and all they got to do is talk to themselves just a little bit and go oh, that doesn't feel good and all of a sudden it feels better so if you reverse engineer that and look at uh, body chemistry and what makes us feel good and feel bad if we're feeling better thinking a thought why do why, why is it so hard to not talk to myself and, and the talking must be given off a trickle of dopamine, serotonin, or oxytocin, or something yeah. like that. So anyway, there's that. So basically, like noticing the soul crap with Enlil and Marduk and other like ETs harvesting us. Like one of the things they did is kind of like setting up a booby trap. As in, anytime they're gonna try harvesting our energy, they get it, and when they start powering up their system, it's like a supernova that explodes. <laughs> so if they power up their spaceships or planets, it's gonna explode and like, oopsie, don't do it again. Um, it's one of the things like you can do, like you can use your visuals to either disconnect, like unplug yourself from the mind or being harvested, or even like imagine these, like let's say reversal machines, it can be like a little satellite or a little drone and constantly like, you know, shifting and like whatever you get redirects it to the other person, kind of like they're gonna receive that you, what you were working on so hard on, like destroying these machines with your visuals or thoughts is as well a good thing. Yeah, so, I like it, I like it. Uh, let's say uh, the the energy of um, being angrier, it could be energy of being sad or lonely too, it doesn't matter, but you got the energy. Uh, and what, what we know of energy, if you split the atom, is just, one little bit of the energy of the whatever. Yeah. Uh, phew, nuke. Uh, so you can program. I could program. I could just just imagine it. Okay. If I'm going to spew out a bunch of angry energy and I go, okay, wait, 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 wait. You know, I might be angry. And I might feel good just being angry and I don't want to, I can't stop if I wanted to. Ah, but you know what? I, I, I'm going to program. If, if somebody's using this, it's going to backfire. It's not going to backfire. It's going to. <laughs> fucking go nuclear <laughs> it's gonna like i can put that timer in that fucking thing and if they put this into their universe their world power up their ship build buildings with it light up their city the motherfucker is gonna go nuclear on them i'll set a timing i'll get them get it nice and built and then yeah 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 and it's just a fun little thing to think and uh yeah. and when we think things we are incredibly powerful god creator beings and when we think uh okay then rich i'm winning the lottery well how many times do you think oh, i wish i could win the lottery you get wish i could win the lottery and you're creating <clears throat> he chokes <clears throat> you're creating wish i could win the lottery and you're experiencing in your life wish i could win the lottery because you're thinking wish i could win the lottery oh that's a i would like to have a relation with relationship with that girl you just created liking to have a relationship with that girl oh man I probably will never see her again you just created probably never seeing her again and then you go oh no don't think like that no i'm going to see her tomorrow i'm going to see her tomorrow you created going to see her tomorrow you're a god powerful being and you're creating every thought you think is manifesting but it's fighting against every other thought you're thinking and so if you could put all these thoughts in, in mathematical formula and on a big blackboard back here, you have this big thing of your last, you know, all your, and what's it all equal, that giant equation? It equals what you got right fucking now, right now. And so when do you start, you know, erasing that and then just more and more of the, the positive or more and more of the good. And then the, the emotional energy that goes with the thoughts <clears throat> that just, add you know more the quantity of qu energy quantity you just jack it up you know exponentially with the intensity of the emotion will uh factor into this manifesting your reality god-like being okay yeah. 
so there i guess like you know like one of the things to look at is if you like notice that it's hard time for you to manifest something or that your life is going sideways like as, if murphy himself is following you all the time it's not your fault you're like you're being messed with and i think like just knowing some of the ways of why it's happening and how you can start like find tools to deal with it and get better so there it is <laughs> Ta -da! Ta -da. well i'm not done yet i want to talk some more about this uh so <clears throat> you were you were doing a session this morning and you tapped into Mar uh, Marduk. Or well, in just like, or in I'm just seeing their mechanisms. Oh, their mechanisms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing how it all works. Oh, I see. Okay. And did you do some work to undo any of that for? Well, like I said, I've said the booby trap that if anything, like you know, <laughs> the harvest our energy, they're gonna explode, and then at the same time disconnecting humanity from that, the uh, stuff like that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good stuff. You got me going here. I'm ready to keep talking. I guess it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> well, okay. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for sharing your sure. what you've noticed and, and saw in your, your stuff. Yeah, thank you for being translator for what I'm seeing. <clears throat> sure. Okay, then, people. Bye-bye.